Tales of the Blade, where we dive into the fascinating and often humorous history of figure skating. Let's introduce this week's hosts. Hi, I'm Evie, and I'm trying to distract myself from the horror that is the clashing of Euros and US Nats by researching figure skating history. You can find me on Twitter at DoubleFlots. Hi, I'm Bex, and I'm primarily preoccupied with trying to survive the winter, which, given the general state of the world, currently might be a tad optimistic. You can find me on Twitter at Bexfer. So Bex, you might remember a few months ago, I took a crazy dive with Neve into the history of ice rinks in like the the Victorian era with the hog rinks. I am haunted, haunted by the chanting of hog rinks, hog rinks, hog rinks. (laughs) It it echoes in your nightmares. Yes, yes, I wake up in cold sweat. Well, don't worry because I've got another exciting ice related topic for you today. That's right, today. We're going over the history of the amazing invention known as the Zamboni. Oh my god! So Bex doesn't didn't know that this was the topic. This is I'm completely spraying this on her. I know, like literally, this was like a managerial trust exercise because normally I'm the producer and I plan and approve everything for the podcast and when Evie a month ago was like hey Bex you want to do Tales of the Blade together and I was like sure what's the topic she's like I'm not telling you yeah. <laughs> she's like all right all right this is true trust right here I'll just let you plot away evilly <laughs> while I wait <laughs> nervously so how much do you know about the Zamboni besides the fact that it is present in every single competition and resurfaces the ice you know what not very much other than that I'm very charmed by many Japanese Zamboni races, which I hope <laughs> features here and like, you know, fun anecdotes of people, you know, befriending Zamboni drivers. But other than that, I'm pretty much, it's it's machine related, so I'm pretty much hopeless. What exciting tales about Zambonis do you have for me? <laughs> oh, I've got many. Okay, so well, Another actual question before we start, though. How do you think that they resurfaced the ice before Zambonis? <laughs> because obviously they had to do it somehow before this amazing machine was created. Okay, so given the era before Good Machine was created, imagine they just like put out a local call for all like the sad children and abused <laughs> child labor and had them like sob and smooth over the ice with like the tears and sweat and like, you know, poor tortured hands would kind of be my estimation given what an elite sport it is but um, (laughs) (laughs) perhaps they had a little more functional fashion (laughs) to do it a bit a bit so before the Zamboni was made like where the first like artificial ice rinks came up and also when you know skating on ponds was a big thing uh resurfacing mainly took the form of people basically driving a tractor on the ice with like a scraper behind it which shaved the surface yeah that makes sense and then they had like three or four people with like scoops that would just brush away all of the shavings and then other people that would like spray the water with hoses and then squeegee all of the dirty water away Uh, But this process took a long time to clean it, you know, scrape it off, wash it, and then let it freeze. It took like an hour to an hour and a half on most drinks, which is, you know, not ideal. Bit inconvenient. That's definitely one they're like, you know what? If we were doing a competition, we um, we wouldn't resurface every two groups. You get like resurfacing in between events. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Resurfacing each day. (laughs) It's just too much bother. Exactly. It's way too much bother it's a lot of work and that's you know time that people could be spent skating on the ice and like it's money lost at the end of the day and so in the 1920s the brothers frank and lorenzo zamboni they were in the business of ice they were actually ice wholesalers they used to make ice in like a factory to use for uh the packing of products on like on trains yeah like commercial production exactly yeah Back when, when, you know, freezers weren't a big thing in homes or in, like, most factories. But uh, eventually, you know, refrigeration technology improved and the demand for block ice kind of began to shrink. And so the Zamboni brothers started looking for, like, other ways to capitalize on their expertise with ice. Because obviously they've got all of this history with making ice. Let's do something with that. Gotta carry on the legacy in some quirky way that actually gets, you know, the bills paid. Exactly, exactly. And so... 
unsurprisingly, they decided to open up an ice rink. Uh, they decided to open up uh, the rink known as Iceland in Southern California. It opened in 1940. So they came up with like a guinea pig rink to sort of just capitalize on the fact that they couldn't sell ice to people as much anymore. This is the funny thing. The original rink actually was open air. It didn't have any sort of roof in Southern California, which sounds like a bit of an oversight when you're reading it on paper because it's just like, it's California. It's gonna be warm. Yeah, like how often did they get like one week out of that? Or this was before, you know, extreme climate change and maybe they had a whole four weeks of use. Oh boy. But they like, obviously they realized their mistake with making it open air. And then like a couple of years later, they decided to put a domed roof over the top of it. So the, the ice was like, would be improved because apparently it wasn't great when it was open air, which, you know, is not surprising. No one is, su- yeah, for ice experts, they seem um, a little optimistic. <laughs> in terms of its survival rate. <laughs> it's like barely above hog rinks in terms of quality, basically. <laughs> right, right. You're just like slight, slight upgrade, but no one's really like healing over in awe. Like, sure, it might be a bit sloppy. It might not be like the required like thickness or like hardness that you, people need, but it doesn't smell like pigs. So that is an improvement. We'll take it. We will take this. <laughs> All right. So they had, so they built an ice rink and then. So yeah, they basically, they built the ice rink, but obviously the resurfacing was used with, they used the tractor method and Frank Zamboni, he thought that this was basically a massive waste of time. This is, you know, <laughs> time that could be spent with people on the ice. And so he decided with the help of his family, come up with uh, an invention that would basically do everything f- in place of a tractor and a couple of dudes. So he was like, how could I make a good sheet of ice in a really short period of time? And he it actually wasn't very long until he decided to develop his first machine. So in March of 1942, he bought a tractor and started experimenting. And his first attempt was basically uh, a big sled towed behind a tractor. What was the sled like? Was the sled just supposed to like smooth out behind it so you didn't need people as much? Or did you have people like camped out on it, like rubbing away at the ice or something as they dragged you along? By the way, I got most of this information about the history of the Zamboni from Zamboni.com. Amazing. (laughs) They literally have a whole section on the history of the Zamboni. I am so delighted. Even including like they have photos of original vintage ads from like the 50s and 60s on there it's fantastic oh my god I can't wait to actually go check these out like the idea of like this beautiful Zamboni historic archive (laughs) exactly I will link these like this on the transcript and I'm also probably going to put some photos on the transcript as well so if people want to have a look at like the different types of Zamboni that we will be discussing shortly yes you can do that yes everyone please get up to date on all your Zamboni models all right so He came up with a sled idea, which probably wasn't quite as effective as he wanted. Yeah, nah, he tried, he did that, uh, and it did, basically, it didn't do its job, it didn't really smooth the surface very well, and it didn't pick up any of the snow that was, like, uh, chipped away by the sled, and so he was like, well, this is a bust, let's do this again. Uh, but in 1947, he had kind of had a different idea where he wanted to make, basically, a machine that would not only shave the ice... But he wanted something that would remove the shavings, wash the ice and squeegee it, and also hold all of the snow in a big tank, like large enough to last for an entire resurfacing job. So really, he wanted an all-in-one machine. Yeah, he basically snapped and went for max efficiency in the design. (laughs) Exactly. He wanted this machine to basically do everything for you. And so in 1949, he created the Model A Zamboni, which is the first ever Zamboni, like, actual like prototype machine he had a couple errors before making this one with experimental models he kind of had like issues where the blade of the zamboni like it would would keep rattling around and so the the you know the snow would get chipped away really unevenly the snow tank on it wouldn't carry enough snow the vehicle <laughs> couldn't drive easily on the ice because it was only two wheel drive like the front wheels were the only ones that could actually move on the ice was like no <laughs> and so he basically he learned from his mistakes he developed the new model a and he actually uh funny story about the fact that like all the model a and in fact i believe also some of the later versions of the zambonis were made completely out of like 
surplus parts from World War II. Oh, yeah. I was thinking at the time, that's really cool, actually. Yeah. He used, like, as the base for most of the early models of Zambonis, he used leftover, like, Jeeps, basically. <laughs> like, the lower parts of Jeeps. Oh, wow. It's like the shell of it. Exactly. So yeah. he was an efficient a- a king and a recycling king at exactly. the same time. Exactly. <laughs> Reduce, <laughs> reuse Zamboni. <laughs> we need more people like that. <laughs> Especially, he found the he found the jeep bodies really handy because they were you know army cars, and so they were four wheel drive with four wheel steering. As I say, they're a bit better at driving on the ice. It's not quite as like a oh this is a disaster skittering across it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Plus, if you're hiring people to drive on the ice from California, you're really you know royally screwed. <laughs> And apparently, like, they, they didn't just use stuff like Jeeps. They apparently, like, used a bunch of other stuff they got from, like, excess supplies from the war. Even, like, the landing gear from a bomber plane was apparently used in the Model A's. I don't know how it was incorporated, but apparently it was the thing. Zambonis were so hardcore back in the day. <laughs> but yes, the Model A, the blade could be adjustable, so like you could decide how much ice you wanted to shave, and like it could be held really firmly in place so it wouldn't like chatter and jiggle all over the place. Very handy. The tank that was built into like the upper part of the machine was where all the ice would be deposited, and then it would be melted and fed back into the water tanks, where that would be used to wash the ice and apply the like last layer of water and it just basically like reduced the job from like a job that required several people a hose and rakes and a tractor to something that could be done basically by one person so this was great that doesn't mean that the model a was perfect it certainly was not perfect what it wasn't perfect (laughs) on the first edition shame on mr zamboni apparently even though the model a was equipped with four-wheel steering he discovered that when the machine was like driven pretty close to the boards and the operator decided like to steer away from him the rear wheels would just steer into the wall while the front wheels would turn away and so the machine would jam- be basically jammed against the wall so you could end up playing like a bad sort of bumper car exactly. version <laughs> of zamboni driving so zamboni race is not recommended back in the no, day is what i'm getting no, at no i don't think that would be fun uh, you'd probably end up with a lot of wrecked zambonis very quickly right and some very very sad boards <laughs> <laughs> But he decided that if he continued with four-wheel drive but made the front steering, like, more of a feature, that problem would kind of be negligible in later models. So that's what he did. But, like, despite it, the popularity of the Model A Zamboni uh, in the home rink, and it only worked in Paramount Iceland. So eventually it was taken out of daily use and replaced by a newer model in, in 53. But they actually decided that in uh, 1996 to restore the original model and it's actually now in its original like it's been restored to its original condition oh my god to the fact that they literally do like uh test resurfaces of it on the ice even apparently to this day i found a video of them actually using it uh on the paramount ice it's just oh great to see that it's a it's a beast of a machine this is so delightful like we finally found something in St. figure skin that has a really long career i love it exactly <laughs> finally it stuck around honestly uh, and obviously you know the model a was great it worked but there were obviously things that could be improved upon and so frank zamboni decided to you know work it out make a Model B and also a Model C. And this was in the 50s. Uh, And so the Model B, a total of four of them were built. Uh, The Pasadena Winter Garden rink purchased the first one. Sonia Henney ordered two and, like, took them around the US on, like, a a personal tour and stuff. One of them even ended up on tour with her in Europe and it was eventually even dismantled there. So they were very well loved by Sonia Henney. This is, yeah, it's like, you know, she just was like, I'll adopt, you know, a of pet Zambonis and take them everywhere. Thank you very much. Exactly. And the other, uh, the touring uh, skating company, the Ice Capades, also purchased a Model B. And so they were pretty popular. Uh, And then 
the next generation of them, they, they were still built completely on a Jeep this time. It was literally basically a whole Jeep with a big water tank on top of it. Uh, and he went through a couple more design changes. Eventually, the, like, the driver's position was elevated. The snow tank was lowered so that the uh, driver would be able to, you know, see the ice around him a bit better rather than just being shunted towards the back and not being able to, like, see over the top of the machine. Because if you look at the original Zambonis, they're probably, like, they're, they're like, the same length as the ones you'd see today, but they're, like, maybe, like, half as high again as they are now. They were very oh tall. Oh, my God. They're, like, towers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so they were hard to look over, which, you know, could prove, like, a bit annoying when you're trying to check the ice to see how much left you've got to resurface. And so... Just just a tad, just a tad. <laughs> and so that was like the the main design like changes over the years was basically to make it all a bit more compact and elevate the driver so that they ever, you know, it'd be smaller, a bit more, you know, easy to use and the driver would be able to see the rink he was actually resurfacing. Good goals, good product design goals. <laughs> Funnily enough, the Model C, Frank actually ended up taking this Zamboni on a little bit of a road trip. Because he had to deliver it to uh, a rink in Berkeley. He drove it himself 450 miles up the coast of California. Evie, does this mean we should, like, road trip to Worlds and the Zamboni is what I'm getting? I mean... <laughs> Everyone just, like, road trips in a vintage Zamboni. I mean, that's honestly... That's a goal, of a personal goal. I would love that. We'd have to strap some more chairs to it, though, because there's only one seat. We'll just break a couple safety walls. It'll be fine. I call shotgun. I call shotgun. <laughs> Do you even have a license? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sort it out. We'll sort it out. So, yes, handy things about vintage Zambonis. Can actually road trip with them if you need to. Well, he did drive it all this way. He did have a bit of an accident, apparently, on the way uh, during the drive the key came out of the steering wheel shaft and he like <laughs> lost complete control over it uh, and the machine veered off into like the bushes on the highway median strip and basically stopped he managed to get the key back in and like he proceeded to actually be able to deliver it but honestly if everyone had phones back in the 50s just being able to take a video of this guy driving a Zamboni down the highway and then having to steer off into the middle of the road I'm just imagining like the sad Zamboni is stranded in the middle of like the desert. <laughs> this poor Zamboni has been stuck here for so long. <laughs> great image, great image. All right, so can road trip with them, you know, fully equipped for all your adventures on and off the ice. I think we need to go back to the vintage design. <laughs> and he, he kept improving on his designs. There were there was a Model D, a Model E. They had small improvements, nothing truly crazy and revolutionary in comparison to the earlier ones he made. Skating was a real booming business in the 50s and so he you know took advantage of that by designing a really efficient model the model f uh instead of using our entire jeep for the foundation of it he just basically used the wheels and like the bottom half of it uh and so mm. he could uh, accommodate like bigger tanks on it which is you know a plus when you're resurfacing large surfaces of, surfaces of ice and also he managed to like lengthen the side panels by six inches which means like the you know the the amount of water and ice it was able to resurface was enlarged and so they would be able to resurface things much quicker woohoo so at that point he was pretty much still the only like it was just kind of his mini fleet and his experimentation for his own ranks but he wasn't really like mass producing or commercializing them at that point there was uh, a factory right it was actually in southern california right next to uh, iceland apparently so like uh, the factory was pretty like busy in the 50s they got quite a lot of orders from rinks all over the country to make zambonis for them apparently like you on most days you could see like the workers driving them down the street near the factory to like test them out and stuff honestly i would love to see like a um flight of the valkyries but flight of the zambonis just like a bunch of them cresting over here dun, 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 <laughs> That's the epic we need to produce. <laughs> Coming this summer, the flight of the Zambonis. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. One Zamboni driver against the world. Sounds about right. <laughs> I would watch the hell out of that. Spinning out what? <laughs> But in the 60s, uh, he actually introduced uh, a brand new design of the Zamboni, which is known as the HD series. It was completely new. It uh, included a 
much bigger snow and water tank. And it, you know, this became like the standard model of which they would build off for basically up until now. Uh, if you look at the HD series, the original one in the, from 64, it basically looks the same as one you would see today. It's very similar in the shape and design. Uh, and yeah, it, it was very, very reliable. It could resurface a, a whole surface in like 15 minutes or less, depending on the size of it, which was, you know, a huge plus. That's a massive improvement. And everyone on general was really, really happy with it. And it they kept, basically kept building off of this design. Other uh, companies also started creating their own ice resurfaces and all their designs kind of ended up mimicking the same kind of shape as the model hd all all throughout this they were all fuel powered like an actual car and so you know that was cool and stuff but they also wanted to you know be a little bit more conscious about the fact that hey this is creating a lot of emissions in a contained rain or something not quite ideal. They're running uh, this like big ice scraping truck around the rink. Uh, you know, maybe we can do something better. And so uh, while they did uh, continue to innovate with like petrol and diesel tank Zambonis in the 90s, they uh, released the 550, which was like the first battery operated, completely like electric ice resurfacer. Wow. And since then, uh, all of the modern versions of the Zamboni have uh, been completely powered by electricity versus fuel. So this like the standard zero emission. Most of them are run on like lithium ion batteries. So yes. Woohoo. Oh, that's brilliant. No, if we could only have more of that in the general automated. <laughs> but I'm, I, I think I'm actually just so impressed that like Frank Zamboni basically came up with this design and created it and then pretty much spent the next almost two decades improving it to the point where he also created not only like the initial Zamboni but the modern Zamboni yeah in a sense like you normally don't necessarily see the same person involved in like that much refinement and usually someone else steals it or you know perfects it but the fact that he just like you know saved our asses by slavishly perfecting it for two decades like kudos to him <laughs> and like it's being like the whole invention has become so synonymous with like his family and himself because you know we all call we don't call them ice resurfaces even if it's not a zamboni brand resurfacer we call them zambonis because that's just what we've all been taught to associate them with that's what they're called kleenex of the ice world <laughs> exactly they're the kleenex of the ice world <laughs> congrats Matt. that is all of the amazing information i have about the history of the zambonis did you learn something something Bex. I did. I feel extremely educated. Although I still want to know who came up with like the cute mini Zambonis because those are my favorite. Honestly, but- they deserve like a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> I know. I know. Most charming creatures. But yes, brilliant. Thank you so much. This was very helpful. And now I'm fully equipped to lecture someone on Zamboni history, which, you know, will be a great party trick. Exactly. You can add it to your hog rinks repertoire. <laughs> yes. It's a surefire way to charm people. Exactly. Just go on a big rant for 15 minutes about the history of the Zamboni. You'll get friends galore. Yes. I'll, I'll report back on that and let you know how that went. Thank you for looking out for my social Oh, lives, that's though. all right. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. We hope to see you again for our next episode. Thanks to the research team for this episode and to our transcribing um, and quality control team. And Evie, thank you again in advance for editing. Um, <laughs> you're welcome to moan about my screeches and giggles at all points to me. <laughs> and to our beloved Gab for always coming through with some fabulous graphic design for us. If you want to get in touch with us, please feel free to contact us via our website website in the low podcast.com or on twitter or instagram and you can find our episodes on youtube itunes google play stitcher spotify zamboni podcast.com you know <laughs> real podcast sites that totally exist if you enjoyed the show and want to help support the team then please consider either making a donation to us on our coffee page or buying our merch on red bubble and we'd like to give a huge thank you to all the listeners who have contributed or given feedback or just listened. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Yes. And you can find all the links to all our social media pages, our coffee and the Redbubble on the website. Yes. And be sure to check out the show notes for some super sweet 
Zamboni. <laughs> yes, go check out the, the transcript for some Zamboni references, some photos. I'll put up a bunch of stuff on there for you guys to look over. If you're interested in looking at photos of old Zambonis from the 50s and 60s. Who wouldn't be? That's an irresistible proposition, let's be honest. And if you're listening on iTunes, please consider leaving a rating or review if you enjoyed the show and enjoyed hearing us rant about Zambonis for half an hour. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thanks for listening. This has been Evie. And Bex. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>